Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Inbred. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man and his date having a brief conversation when a worker interrupts to ask for a share of lemonade. The man who seems to be the boss of the worker refuses and tells him to go back to work. The worker then angrily replies with an axe to the man's mouth, chops the woman's lower left leg, and finishes her off with an axe. The scene is revealed to be a clip being watched by a group of young offenders named Tim, Sam, Dwight, and Zeb, and their caretakers, Kate and Jeff. They are on their way to give community service in a town called Mortlake. Kate informed her partner Jeff that their navigator is broken, and it tells them they are off the map. Jeff responds that it may not be up to date. Jeff then brings a map as a solution for their trip to Mortlake. As they are near their destination, a glimpse of something disturbing is visible in the grass field. Tim asks Sam if she saw it. Sam nods, but they don't discuss it further. As soon as they arrive, Jeff confiscates their phones so that they can appreciate their surroundings more fully. A dirty, run-down place greets the group at the entrance, which makes them feel uneasy. While exploring the rooms, Sam finds a disturbing image, showing a group of young kids holding a dead pig's head. The naughty offender, Dwight, surprises Sam, which causes her to scream. The group gathers in response to Sam's screaming. Kate calms down the conflict and tells them that they're heading to the local pub later. Later on, Jeff excuses Kate to go outside. Outside, Kate and Jeff argue because Jeff thinks it's not wise to take the group of young offenders to the pub. Kate wants the group to be motivated and have some fun, so she tells Jeff to just calm down a bit. Then they proceed to walk back inside and the group starts cleaning the house. After that, Jeff tries to motivate the young group at the table, but fails to do so. The offenders walk out before Jeff can get to a point in his speech. Later on, the gang prepares to go to the pub. Upon arrival, they feel uncomfortable inside the pub, as many weird-looking people are staying there. Kate greets the bartender, named Jim. Since there are no seats, Jim tells a group of weird people to move out of their seats for their guests. After they are seated, Jeff walks up to the counter and grabs something to snack on. Jeff rejoins them and presents them with the pub's special, a weird-looking biscuit that has some sort of human hair. Dwight gets surprised and calls it horrendous, but Jim insists that he should try giving it a bite. Dwight eats it and says it tastes delicious out of respect, but disgust is seen on his face. The group then requests Coke as their drink, but Jim replies that he doesn't have any Coke and that it's been a while. Jim insists on serving free lemonade, and they agree to it. At the counter, as Kate pours the lemonade, the bartender asks where they're staying. As Kate answers, the bartender drops a glass and tells her not to panic. As Kate answers another question about what they are doing to that place, another glass falls again. Kate felt unworried this time. At the table, Zeb starts beatboxing, while the others sing along to pass the time. Kate arrives with the lemonades, and the group clinks their glasses together. Outside the pub, two guys are dragging a seemingly dead body on a sack inside the pub. When they get inside, Jim kicks the two guys and tells them to put it in the back. Other people in the club do not mind the sack, as if it is a normal thing for them. Shortly after, Sam walks outside the pub to take a smoke, but gets confronted by a crazy man. Out of fear, Sam gets inside the pub, and Jim pushes the crazy man away from Sam. Jim tells the group not to worry because he is harmless. He then proceeds to assure the group that they're going to be alright during their stay, as long as they tell strangers that they are friends with him. The following morning, Dwight and Tim begin arguing, making the rest of the room feel uncomfortable as Dwight continues to talk offensively. Keg has had enough and shuts him out of the conversation. After that, Jeff arrives and presents them with their uniform to use, which is a bright vest that they will use for their community service. Later on, the group hike and arrives at an abandoned train station. Kate and Jeff gather them all and announce that they will split into two teams. Jeff explains that the two teams will seek salvageable materials from the trains, and the team that gets the most valuable material will win. Later, Tim, Sam, and Kate get on the first train to salvage some parts, while Kate sits to rest outside. Kate hears a quiet groan, so she checks the source of the noise. She gets inside the train, and a man seems to be pleasuring himself. Kate interrupts and startles the smelly hormones out of him, causing the man to flee away. Upon further inspection, the books that the man uses are pretty disturbing. It contains photos of naked women, with their heads replaced with some animal heads. Kate gets scared by a ferret from above, which then causes her to retreat outside the train. Meanwhile, Tim convinces Sam to join him to go to a nearby cottage with visible smoke. When they approach the smoke, they discover a very disturbing goat being burned alive. Sam hurriedly frees another goat leashed nearby. 
A few seconds later, a truck hits the running goat, immediately killing it. Sam and Tim flee the scene out of fear. As they run, they get ambushed by a group of inbreds, who are born with obvious deformities and mental retardation, caused by the inbreeding of their ancestors in the small and secluded town since 1970s. Tim and Sam are about to be harassed by them, so they scream for help. Luckily, Kane arrives and hits the leader and tells his people to let Tim go. They call the attention of the other group. When the other group arrives, Jeff scares the inbreds away. While Jeff shoes the inbreds, he trips and gets stabbed in the thigh with a metal sheet. When they remove the sharp object, the thigh begins to bleed more, and the inbreds laugh from afar. Kate asks for help from the inbreds, but they refuse and run away. Soon after, all of them carry Jeff in a wagon and go out to the pub to ask for help. When they arrive, Jim advises them to put Jeff in the back kitchen. The group is freaked out and desperate to find help for Jeff. Suddenly, Jim chops Jeff's head off to end his suffering. The rest group is then pulled out of the room and dragged into the cellar. Later on, the inbreds that harassed the group previously arrive at the pub, and Jim is pissed about what happened. Jim beats him, but the leader explains what happened. But after their argument, they get along together, and Jim seems to be content with what they did. Inside the cellar, the group panics, thinking about how to escape. Zeb suggests that they need something to pick up the lock of the door. Zeb finds a hairpin and attempts to open the lock. Shortly after, Jim arrives and abducts Zeb from the group. Zeb is later dragged into an unknown place, where he is pinned down by another group of inbreds. They lock Zeb's limbs to the ground, and Zeb can only scream in fear. After successfully locking down Zeb, one inbred stays with him while the others wander away. In a dressing room, Jim prepares for a show and does his makeup. Soon after, he goes outside and onto the stage. He entertains the crowd and introduces the show, while Zeb is behind him, covered with a cloth. After the introductions, he reveals Zeb to be defiled for mere entertainment, and in bread sticks pieces of vegetable into his nose and mouth. After that, the entertainers bring in a horse that walks all over Zeb. Shortly after, Zeb's head is crushed by the horse, resulting in his immediate death. After the gruesome act, Jim arrives and tells the guests that the show will continue. So a group of inbreds goes to the cellar, and Jim asks for some more people to be tortured. Fortunately, the group escapes from the cellar. When they get out of the cellar, Dwight knocks the ambushing inbred, giving them a chance to run. Outside the pub, a guarding inbred sees them escaping. Despite the other's success, Dwight gets captured by the guarding inbred just around the corner. Due to Git's unsuccessful escape, he is now the next guy to be used for the torture show. Shortly after, the entertainers dress Dwight in a bib and a wig for the next show. Jim returns to the stage and introduces Dwight as another torture victim, which is followed by a chant from the audience. Meanwhile, the group reaches the cottage. Kate is in a state of panic as she loses her keys to their car. Since they are in a hurry, Tim breaks the window and starts hot-wiring it, which successfully turns on the engine. As soon as they feel safe and confident, an inbred ambush them. The car stops, and the inbred starts shooting at the car's window. At the show, the man in the mask entertains the guests and reveals a pump full of fecal matter. He starts pumping in Dwight's mouth, which pops his eyes out and his stomach to blow up, causing his guts and diabetics to spill all over the crowd. After his death, the crowd claps in satisfaction. Meanwhile, in the escaping group, the car windows get shot by an inbred, and they ram him with the car. While the inbred is knocked out, Kate grabs his weapon and ammo. The car gets stuck, so the group pushes it. Not long after, another inbred tries to intrude again, but Kate is not in the mood to mess around, and shoots him dead as soon as he approaches them. The group goes back into the vehicle. Afterward, the news reaches Jim, causing him to be pissed off, so he sends inbreds on the hunt for the runaway hostages. Jim ambushes the vehicle that they are riding on, while it runs over a few inbreds on its way. When the car stops, Jim tells someone to check the inside of it. However, there's no one inside the car. Jim tells his men that he's ahead of the game, because he has laid traps to keep them from escaping. On the other side, the group runs back to the cottage, in an attempt to find the map and their confiscated cell phones. When the group enters, Kate finds the map, but cannot find their phones. She goes out, and upon opening the door, she sees Jim waiting outside. Kate hurriedly closes the door, which then gets her hand shot as she tries to close and lock it. Outside, the crowd celebrates. Tim loads his gun and shoots one of Jim's men, unnoticed. As the weapon run out of bullets, Tim returns to the dining room and asks Kate for ammo. From the outside, Jim requests someone to check in. When they open the door, it reveals Kate on the ground. Kate surprises the inbred with a stab, and Tim follows up with a bash to the inbred's inbred head, and they push him outside. As the door closes, the inbred is surprised to see a gun already pointing at him. The inbred then asks for Jim's help. 
Jin tries to help by taunting him out of the shot, but he sees Sam through the window. He shoots the window in an attempt to hurt Sam, and Tin returns the bullet to a nearby inbred. Jim then tries to aim where Sam shoots, but in the process, he kills one of his own men. In the house, Tim removes the glass shards from Sam's face in order to treat her injury. Sam thanks Tim, and he appreciates it. The two tongue massages in the heat of the moment. Kate sees the intimate but smelly moment, so she immediately leaves the scene. Here, Kate realizes that she should sacrifice herself, as the young couple has so much to live for. Shortly after, Kate sneaks off to get some distance, while the group of inbreds is mourning their dead mate's body. Kate taunts Jim's men and runs away, hoping that they will chase her and gives the couple a chance to escape. Despite this, the inbred group bets on what trap she'll step into, since they know she's going to get caught anyway. True enough, Kate accidentally steps into a bear trap, and she screams and rides in pain. Jim sees her from afar and sends one of his men to amputate Kate's leg with a chainsaw. Shortly after, the man cuts Kate's leg out of the trap, making her crawl, while Tim and Sam prepare for their escape. Jim observes Kate from afar and aims for his shotgun. Jim pulls the trigger and successfully kills Kate. After Kate's death, Tim walks down to the basement and discovers a box full of alcohol. Tim uses every bottle that he sees and pours it all over the ground. Later on, Tim tells Sam his plan for their escape, which includes burning the place down to kill them. Outside, Jim and his group prepare to go in. Tim offers peace, but Jim asks him to prove it. Tim replies by putting the gun outside the door. Jim and the inbreds prepare to go inside the place. Inside, Jim's men don't check through and venture deeper toward the basement, allowing Sam to escape the house. In the basement, Tim shows up and threatens them that he'll burn the place if they don't put their weapons down. Tim now burns the assumed alcohol, but it is revealed to be a dunce. Jim explains that it is piss water. Tim curses at the inbreds as they kill him. Within the final moments, as the inbreds see Sam running away outside, they start to bet on how she'll die. She steps on a landmine and tries not to move, but a ferret crawls up her leg, blowing the mine up. After Sam's death, Jim and the inbreds go back to the pub for a pint. The film ends as the inbreds sing a song to celebrate killing all of their visitors. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.